Greetings. In this section, we're going to build image controls in the front end of our social media site. In this section's videos, we're going to add a form to upload new images, provide buttons to delete existing ones, add page navigation, and tune the server's upload limits. In this particular video, we're going to focus on adding a form to upload images. To do that, we're going to create some flash scope messages on the UI. We'll add the form that we just mentioned for uploading images, and then we're going to capture report, uh, success and failure messages and show them on the UI. Now going back into our IDE, we're going to make some alterations here. Now in the past, we had this create file function, and it was focused on giving us a restful response. Instead, we're actually going to change it to interact with the template and give us some flash scope messages. Given that, we don't need the location URI anymore, so we're going to actually drop this option. Instead, we're going to get Spring MVC's redirect attributes. Now, in the past, we had it fetching a location URI, and we don't need that. We're also going to change the response type. Okay, scratch. I'm going to reset this and then restart this section, okay? Okay, start from here. If we're going to start uploading images from our web page, we need a way to report success or failure. And to do that, we're going to use flash scoped messages. Flash scoped messages are bits of data you can put into your template, but they're only there for the immediate request. The next time you refresh the page, the data will be gone. Our existing method that we built for doing file creation was based on returning a location URI. We don't need that anymore since we're using a template, so we're going to take that out. So I'm going to delete this parameter here and instead replace it with the redirect attributes from Spring MVC. We also don't need this exception handler or exception uh, signature. Uh, since we're not fetching a location URI and we're actually going to change the message here, I'm going to drop that out. And then finally, we're no longer returning a restful response. We're instead dealing with views. So we're just going to return simple strings for view names. So with this, we're going to go build up our, our flash message data. Here we'll do an add flash attribute. We'll call it flash.message. Now if there's an error, we're also going to send back a flash attribute. Able to upload, get original file name. And we'll include a little error message. Now we're almost done. The return now is going to be a view, except this time we're going to direct the web page to do a re tell it to do a redirect. So in this case, we're going to redirect and send it to slash or the home page. Now with all this, that should be enough for the controller side. Now let's go back to our template here and plug in our flash scope message. To do that, we're going to create an H3 header element. We're going to use time leaf's text operation in order to fetch some vars data. This vars parameter lets you access any variable that happens to be in the request. In this case, we're actually accessing the piece of data that's only going to be there for one request during the flash scope. And then in this case, it's wrapped in a time leaf expression. Now the other thing is, is we only want this piece of, we only want this element to be displayed if there's a flash message. So we're actually going to use time leaf's if construct. You can kind of, you can put in any criteria you want to conditionalize this attribute, but we're going to use the same thing. If there's a flash message, display the flash message. And then finally, let's play, let's put in a little styling to make the message pop. To do that, let's go back to our main.css file and add a flash class. About a little background color, maybe some light coral. That that's, looks nice. And then a uh, touch of padding, How about one element. All right, with that, we should have the messages lined up. Now the final piece to make this sing is we need to add our upload form. Let's put that below the table. Now we're going to pick post as the method to do the form with. The encoding type is going to be a multi-part form data, because that's what we're set up to handle on the controller. And then we need to give it the path that it's going to complete this action, in this case, slash images. Now we need to create an input element in order to receive files. This, by picking this, it will signal the browser to open up and let us choose a file. 
Now we need to name this variable. Now something that's important to remember when you're working with time leaf is every element needs to be closed. Input tags in HTML don't require it, but time leaf does. Now we're going to create a submit button. And let's set the, the value of the button to read upload. Now something that's very important to point out here is that there's a lot of testing tools built into browsers, IDEs and such, uh, to help you interact with RESTful services. However, it's possible that they don't completely support things. For instance, at the time of writing, IntelliJ ID, IDE doesn't let you plug in the actual name of this parameter here. So just in case things aren't working, try another form of input just to make sure that it's not your own code. With this in place, it's time to fire up the app and give it a test run. Now here, our Spring Boot app launches up. Okay, let's go to the browser. Okay, no, no messages up there. If I actually look at the page source, there's no H3 element up here. Let's choose a file and upload our favorite item. Learning Spring Boot JPEG. All right, let's hit the upload button. Blam! Here it is. We got it down here, and you'll notice up here we got a nice message pop up: "Successfully uploaded Learning Spring Boot JPEG." I can click all around here, but if I actually refresh it, it's gone. Now, what happens if we upload the same message or the same file a second time? Kaplow! It failed to upload Learning Spring Boot JPEG. And what's not completely captured in the stack trace here, though, is the fact that we already have a file up there by the same name. Okay, no problem there. So we can keep playing around, tinker with our platform, you know, upload other, upload other images and some such. And uh, uh, wait a second, did I just upload an image of a Corba book? Oh, well, let's go delete. Well, gee, there is no delete button. Well, I guess you're going to have to wait until the next video to see how to add that in. So, what have we done so far? We've built the form to upload images, and we added some flash scope messages to the front end, dynamically displayed based on whether or not there is a message, and we applied a little styling.